When Chelsea's 24-year-old whippersnapper goalkeeper Kepa Arzabalaga refused to leave the field after being substituted by his 60-year-old manager, I can't say I was surprised. Behaviour like this now appears to be par for the course. Football's caught in a perfect storm. A massive shower of TV cash falling on some incredibly rich, talented, spoilt boys, supposedly under the control of club bosses who'd rather fire the manager than upset the talent. It's a dreadful example to set for young people. I wouldn't mind if they were making a fuss about something that mattered, like the American footballers protesting about racism, but they aren't. Why not cap young players' wages at, say, five grand a week until they're 23, which should be enough to keep anybody in top-class trainers and ripped jeans? If clubs want to pay more, they can pay into a trust fund that's protected until they're 24. And if behaviour falls short, it goes to the Football Association. Wouldn't it be rich if every time one of the prima donnas throws a tantrum, a chunk of their money gets siphoned off to support, say, the grassroots game, or even better, women's football. Well, that, that discussion, when I was chairman of the FA, that was a discussion that did go on about whether... Uh, and, and actually came from some of the agents as well who felt that the kids were getting too much money too early and could you put it into a trust fund for them. I, I, the idea of putting in caps for wages, it's not going to happen, whether you like it or not, it's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, what happened at the weekend was totally unacceptable. And to find him a week's wages, which is what Chelsea have done, Ridiculous. is pathetic. Ridiculous. They probably should have said, we're going to get rid of him. He's going. But, of course, that's very difficult for Chelsea because they're probably going to get rid of the manager as well, which, they've, which is what they do every, two, every year or two years anyway. Uh, the problem is the people who are in charge of the players, the, the, the manager, the coach, whatever it is, have got to have some authority. And in this case... Everybody saw on those pictures, he lost the authority, didn't he? Yeah, the problem is, Greg, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're agreeing violently. As a Chelsea supporter of more than half a century, the problem here is that Chelsea is a great example, but I think it's true amongst all football clubs that the authorities seem to have the spines of a jellyfish, actually, and they are allowing the money... From, not just from the players' wages, but the merchandising and all the rest of it, to call the shots. Well, this is... The, I mean, remember, this is the most expensive goalkeeper in the world, I think. Either the first... £72 or, million. Yeah, £72 million pounds they paid for him. Therefore, if you're in charge of the club, you sit there saying, would it be cheaper to get rid of the manager rather than get rid of the player? And, and, and the manager was, is obviously in difficulty anyway. I mean, I think Chelsea have got a lot more to answer for. I mean, the real problem Chelsea have got is that they've got the best youth structure in the country, yep. they've won the EFA Youth Cup year after year, and none of those kids get through their system. Well, to sort of, without making this sound too much like an episode of On the Ball or whatever it might be, <laughs> yeah. although it's delightful that Carol is clearly out of her depth, so she's just sitting there. I've got no, I'm sure you But on. just briefly, um, Trevor, I have supported... Leicester City for more than 50 years. And that is another example of where the players effectively said, we don't want the manager anymore, and they've just made a change. I happen to think the manager they're getting in is brilliant. But let's just actually say, because I want to explore an issue with you, but we do need to get in what the goalkeeper that we've spoken about, Kepa Aritha Balaga, has said oh, subsequently, oh which is... Very good. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, thank you, I have been practising. <laughs> although there was... <laughs> although there was a... Peter Shilton would have been so much easier. <laughs> although there was a misunderstanding, on reflection I made a big mistake with how I handled the situation. I wanted to take the time today to apologise fully and in person to the coach, to Willie, my teammates and to the club. I have done this and now I want to offer the same apology to the fans. Willie, of course, being the other goalkeeper who thought he was going to get on the game. He right. did get dropped last night, of course. He did get yeah. dropped for the, sub the game the after that, game absolutely. Was he was night. on the bench that, and, yeah. and with the other goalkeeper was it. But the, the, what interests me is, uh, Trevor, this is private money. Mm. If Manchester United or Chelsea or Leicester City want to pay these blokes this kind of money, it's, it's not my taxes that are paying for them. And if they can make the economics work, and I think in many cases they can't, but that's their fault, not that's their worry, not mine, why should you worry? Because look at the tax that comes out. And lastly, before I yield, we've got a figure for the amount of tax that comes out, courtesy of the EY consultancy. 2016 to 17, Premier League players paid one point one billion pounds in tax. That's a lot of nurses sure. and doctors. I, I want to bring in Carol, but the answer to that is very simple. I'm not suggesting that the government gets involved here, but my worry is the game that I support, that I love, is about to kill the goose uh, yeah. that Ooh. laid the golden egg. Because, because at some point... I mean, we as a club, Chelsea, we are suffering 
from this incredible bad behaviour. We're not uh, performing at the level we should do. My point is, the more of this goes on, at some point, the game itself will become less attractive and that well, five billion quid a year that's coming in you will just disappear. You know, you can't expect to pay someone 400 grand a week and for them not to be arrogant and badly behaved, bearing in mind most of them are 22, 23... I years. don't know. Nick no, gets no, that. Okay. I, mean, okay. I have my I mean, moments. You have your moments. Have my moments. But also, and it doesn't apply to all young players, you know, because a lot of the young Muslim play, players pay 10% of their salary to charity They're anyway. Tired, yeah. But, but the, for me, the most important... Do you remember, I remember reading a story a few years ago when the love of the game was what was important, not the money involved in the game. Do you remember the story about Maradona, arguably the greatest player in the world? He left a big league club, Barcelona, to go and play for a little league club, Napoli, because of his love of the game. This was, a, this was a club that had never won a major league. With him, it did. Because what Maradona was interested in was not money. It was making history, and he made history. And I don't think young kids now and players make decisions about their career based on history and the love of the game. They make it based purely on money, well, of which they have too much of. There are quite... I mean, there are kids at, at quite a young age who are earning phenomenal amounts of yeah. money who don't actually play for the teams. They're not in the clubs. The, yeah. I mean, the, the average salary of sort of 15 to 18 years is a lot of money. Mm. And there's a lot of stuff going on that shouldn't be going on. There's a lot of people being uh, bribed, basically, to join certain clubs to go to certain things. All the parents are bribed, and they all know it. But also, Greg, an agent. That, 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 for example, is why Chelsea, of course, is faced with a transfer ban, because whatever it's done with the recruitment of young, people, young, young players clearly hasn't been right. But, Michelle, but, but Michelle... I found your, um, your intro quite derogatory um, to some of those football players. Um, so football, as to your point, it's a very private funded business. Yeah. Um, the Premier League, if we focus just on the Premier League, it's a monumental brand now. And football goes way beyond just what goes on in the stadiums and the terraces. Like if I think back to one of my most favourite uh, memories over the last few years has been the World Cup. And how that World Cup was pretty much, in my memory, the only thing that's managed to bring together people, regardless of any other opinions, brought together society, brought together people. So I think football well, does a do lot that, more. Michelle, That's the love of the game that No, does but that. hold on. But I'm talking about football generally. So and when you're talking about this, this Chelsea thing, the person at fault there for me was the manager. Ooh. A manager is supposed to manage their team. Oh, yeah. If your team doesn't have enough respect for you as their leader, there's a problem with you. You need to be looking at yourself, your management style, and looking at why on earth a member of your team would behave in that way. And did you see him in the... Um, in the sense. It's embarrassing. No, I don't think that. I don't think that's right. I mean, uh, several players and Rio Ferdinand made this point on TV last night. In an old Chelsea team, mm -hmm. Sarri, it wouldn't have been an issue because John Terry, Frank Lampard would have got round him and said, "I don't care what you think," and got him off the pitch. <laughs> one of the one of the features yeah. there was that the senior players at Chelsea basically turned their backs and didn't get involved. So it's not just to do with the manager. But my point, I don't think this is reasonable to say this is just their own money. We regulate this game. Mm. Uh, we, the, the game... Uh, many uh, many uh, rewards, the game operates the way, according to rules, which at some point Greg, Greg set. So let's not say that, you know, anything goes. That would be well, the, wrong. But the FA isn't an effective... I didn't say anything The goes, FA isn't anyway. an effective... That's the real problem. The FA isn't an effective regulator. It's supposed to be. And can't be. No, well, it's not... The clubs... Why can't? Because it, all the money belongs to the clubs and the FA is reliant. The, the FLA is reliant on they haven't got the rules. This will be this will be a disciplinary thing for the for the Premier League itself. It wouldn't be for the FA. But because this is about their employer them being an employer and employing this guy. But how do you I mean the real thing is you've got to understand this kid, I I'll give you a bit of sympathy for him. He's de desperately disappointed that he's being substituted. That's what it's about. Yeah. It's mm. desperately well, disappointed. He's not playing good enough. Aim, he's Aim, not Aim, Aim, Aim and Dunphy, when he was was a journalist in Ireland, yeah. but he, he was a footballer for Manchester United and for most of his career at Millwall, he wrote a wonderful book about football in which he said, when you get substituted, what you really want is for the other side to score six. <laughs> right? And I, I think that sums up a lot of life. Right? Well, but how, how do you is... impose authority on someone who doesn't want authority? Oh, You've oh, been a manager. Chelsea... So take it, take it away from football. You've got, well, he, you've got an employee here, who won't do as you tell him he, or her. Well, he, here, the Chelsea board, the Chelsea executives, should be backing the manager to say, that player is not playing for me again. And, yes. I, and I think this is exactly right. I mean, it, what lies behind this for me is, in a sense, Nick's point. We cannot 
have arenas, particularly popular arenas, in which the grown-ups simply abdicate their responsibility and say, what can we do about these kids? You cannot, because this... I mean, th this has a much wider impact here. Uh, Kepa is a great player. I hope that we can, in some way, keep him, though I think that there's a case for saving, basically uh, selling him off now and making it clear. But the fundamental point here is the game is not the Wild West. It has to operate according to some rules and some codes and some decencies. Otherwise, we're going to be in really serious trouble. All right, well, coming up, why I'm being driven round the bend. <laughs> <laughs>